Hello? Hello. Hey, Patch, can I get a selfie with you? We'll have to do it after. Yes, okay, thanks. Yeah, the access to this region is blocked. Alright. I'm gonna be waiting right here by the border. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. we're gonna I'm wait sure right here. That. Okay. Do you think we're ready to start, Patch? Uh, I do believe so. Is PD ready? Uh, I'll check. I'm seeing two regions is down, but I'm sure that's not the case. Not seeing anyone on a stand. And I can... No, that's definitely not the case. Uh, I, s I see. I see, folks. Okay. Okay, I can give you the um, Facebook and we are going out live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to post this in chat and hopefully the chat relay will pick them up. But as you lucky, lucky people are here, you can see us anyway. But huge thanks to SL for live TV uh, for streaming this. Okay, okay. Hello? Yes, I'm back. I just froze. I'm going to turn my camera around so I don't have to look at so much. Sorry, audience. I love you, but I think I'm not going to crash if I just look at Patch. <laughs> Okay, shall we make a start? Yeah, I'm ready. Fantastic. Okay, so hello everyone, and welcome to the first of the Meet the Lindens talks. Uh, we're going to be having a talk each day, Monday to Thursday, and then on Friday, I'm going to be talking to the moles, and Patch will be back here again, I think. Yes, I will be. Okay, so Patch is the Senior Director of Product Operations at Linden Lab. Uh, he's been a resident since 2004. He was born into second life as Patch in September of 2007. I believe that back in the early days you were a fairly successful resident before you became a Linden. I was. I had a, uh, a pretty big uh, clothing business uh, back in the day. Long before mesh. I mean, presumably barely even flexes in those days. We, we did not have flexes, nor did we have... Um, sculpties. Uh, sculpties, yeah. So, yeah, basic system clothing, but pretty. It uh, was pretty much everything we could do to tease out details and stuff uh, with flat, you know, 2D imaging and texture lighting and stuff. Wow. And then you, came, you joined the lab and became Patch Linden. I did. I did. Um, you know, I was uh, uh, also really big into uh, the volunteer circles and stuff. Uh, I was a Second Life mentor uh, for quite a few years mm -hmm. and um you know i think uh i really kind of credit maybe some of my involvement with uh the mentors program as to you know kind of 
being, you know, discovered and, and pretty well known uh, for helping residents uh, to the best of my abilities, that kind of got me um, recognized uh, with the Lindens back then. Right. There was a very active volunteer program back in those days. I'm afraid that's not Patch's kitty, it's my kitty. She's 20 years old. Uh, so she gets to walk in where she wants to. Okay, so you joined. When you joined, what role did you have? So I originally joined um, in support. Um, I was a, uh, a, a liaison initially, and that was actually really short-lived, and I immediately kind of rolled into uh, the concierge team as a uh, concierge support tech. Wow. You still work with support, don't you, and support-based decisions? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, in fact, all of the support teams report up to me in my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. um, and there's mm -hmm. five of them. Uh, I had to use a support person the other day, and she, she was really incredibly helpful. So, you know, still awesome. going strong. So you're making decisions on a daily operational business basis, um, and you also have oversight over all the various teams, don't you? Yeah. Of course, the moles uh, are included in that as well uh, with mm -hmm. uh, our content creation work and stuff uh, in Second Life. That's probably your most visible role to the residents, I'd say. Y y yes, I agree. So, can you explain a little about the moles? Because I was quite interested. I mentioned them today in a post, and someone said, well, I didn't know they were Second Life residents. Um, that, you know, they'd come in as being Second Life residents and creators. Sorry. So can you, you, could you tell people about the moles, what they are and what they do? Oh, yes. Uh, so the moles are freelance contractors. Um, they are, you know, usually residents, of course, uh, from Second Life, who uh, have come to us with a passion for... Uh, working to improve Second Life content-wise, uh, and we uh, set up a program back then around uh, kind of getting their assistance in doing that, and uh, the program lives on to this day, um, enabling us to do uh, really big, wonderful things like build out new Linden homes. Mm. Uh, we're certainly going to be talking about the Linden homes. I was going to say, um, what were your first impressions when you came to the lab? How did it compare with being a resident? I'm sorry, could you ask that again? You broke up. Sorry. I was going to say, what were your first impressions when you came to the lab? How did it compare with being a resident? Oh. Yeah, it's quite a few years back. Um, well, I... I, I think besides the initial, you know, shock of just having become a <laughs> becoming a Linden, um, you know, I had the benefit of all of the years worth of experience that I've kind of brought with me as being a landowner, a creator, um, having worked in the mentor program, and uh, uh, you know, I, I I think also my my at that time real life background profession uh, stuff in the line of work I was in um, just kind of lent itself to putting me in a position to you know, help residents and stuff and uh, the you know the, the translation I think between all of those things kind of coming together um, actually kind of made it to where I felt like uh, it was just a natural progression of myself both professionally and personally at that time so you know I, 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 I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. Um, I love what I do, and uh, I hope that shows today still uh, for everything that we kind of put on the table. I think it does. I, I, yeah, when I talk to you, it's, uh, there is no mistaking your enthusiasm. What would you say, which aspects do you love most? 
Oh gosh, that's hard. Um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of different things that I really love. Um, probably um, the the residents, the community, um, the socialization aspects, uh, and stuff are are really huge for me. Um, you know, kind of built this all walks of life across the globe uh, for various things. Um, you know, I I think that that's probably you know, and also what drives me the most is is knowing that Second Life empowers us to all of um, on top of the content creation and various connections you can make, friendships, uh, etc. Kind of down the line. You're cutting out a bit. Um, I'll let you know if it gets to be a real problem, but I could follow that. Um. What would you say is most challenging? Probably the most challenging thing for me is, um, you know, whenever we do something or make a decision, um, you know, that affects the community uh, and it's received negatively or in a bad light, um, seeing, seeing sometimes the pain uh, and stuff and feeling the pain that our mm. resident base may sometimes endure. Um, you know, is is probably the most challenging thing. Um, I tend to internalize a lot of it and carry it with me. Uh, and I like to say that I do that for the good because it also guides me on, you know, guiding our internal principles on how we make decisions for things. Um, and so I, you know, I can I can present that I think in a meaningful way internally to say, you know, hey, this really hurt. And um, how can we make it better and try to steer and drive people to make things better? I think it, it's true that pretty much everything that gets introduced results in a howl from the residents. <clears throat> Marion McCann had a great line about, you know, how this was introduced in this year and the residents said the skies are falling. Yeah. I, I I I I I heard that, and um, you know I know having just been through a couple of things recently, uh, that uh, you know we we are listening, we listen, um, and we have uh, you know, we like to try to have ears all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. um, we pay attention to the forums, we pay attention to groups and world. There's all sorts of places that we tend to be, and um, you know that I think gives us a lot of insight. We can't catch everything though. Um, so sometimes somebody will come to me and say, you know, hey, did you know that such and such a thing was going on? And I'm like, oh, no, I had no idea. Tell me about it. <laughs> right. Yes. So uh, as, as much as I like to say we're, we can try to be everywhere and listen to everything at the same time, um, okay. there's a whole lot more of you all out there than there is uh, us. So, you know, I, uh, I, I, I try to make sure that, um, you know, I give everyone as much uh, attention and time as I can and stuff to make sure that, you know, you know that we hear you. Have you, um, have you been able to see much of the birthday? Because, of course, you've done more for the birthday this year than for a very long time. I have. I have. Um, we, and yes, we have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in fact, we, um, we kind of took over the operational running nature of um, SLB. Uh, for the first time this year in a good handful of years. Um, and uh, we uh, wanted to do that so that, again, we saw this as a springboard for us to leverage another thing that we kind of have always traditionally been involved with, even in the background, uh, you know, in the years prior um, when it was run by, uh, you know, the resident committee and stuff before us. Um, and they did a fabulous job with it as well. Uh, my hats off to them. Uh, we, uh, you know, of course, having been, you know, uh, kind of separated from that end of it uh, for a little while, have a healthy appreciation for what all they went through and have done to put this together. Um, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's all come together really well again this year. Uh, I've heard a lot of very, very good feedback. And, um, you know, as they say, you always can learn from it, move on and do better next time. Um, so I hope everyone's enjoying it. Um, 
I know the team loved putting it together. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. And of course, it's still going on. We have a, another way to go. Um, yeah, so I, I, think, uh, I think it's going right. It is, and there's lots going on. I have to admit, I went to pick up the newbie avatar um, that's on offer at the welcome area. Not Well, not a newbie avatar, the special birthday avatar. I ended up getting all four, so you might be seeing me looking rather different soon. Yes, um, actually, and there's four avatars. Yes. Not just the one, there's, there's four. Yeah. Yep. And um, there's also a couple of other little uh, items running around out there, too. Like, there's a hat, a flag, uh, there's a lanyard, uh, and some other stuff. <laughs> well, just occasionally, you know, just to try it out. I think the name tag will give it all away, though. Okay, so... Let's talk about the thing that everyone loves, which I think I can safely say, which is the new Linden Homes. More groups for everybody? Oh, Linden Homes? Uh, yes. Oh, that. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, we were at the Home and Garden Expo, which was their very first showing. And you yes. showed the houseboats and the traditional homes and everyone just loves them yeah they um they they were they and they have been and continue to be um extremely popular mm -hmm. um i don't know maybe i'm i'm just modest and not saying like a smash hit but um you know oh, i I, I, I do think that they are probably up there. <laughs> uh, and, of course, then we just debuted um, our preview to our next theme, which is campers right. and trailers. Oh. Right. Now, as a European, I'm a little misty on what the difference is between a camper and a trailer. So a camper is something that you pull behind a vehicle and you would go right. camping in. A trailer is something that, in our use case, is like a tiny home trailer, a trailer that has been converted to look like a little house on wheels. Right. Um, and then, you know, there's other arrays of recreational vehicles or RVs out there, like motorhomes. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get into all of that because there's all sorts of classifications. And I know, like, it's popular in the European countries to call them, like, caravans. Mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. And depending on what country you're from, I've even seen different varieties of caravans look everything from like the Airstream or the Americanized trailer or something like that, you know, camping right. trailer to like the tiny home variety, ones that actually yeah. look like little miniature houses on wheels. Yeah, yeah. They, there's a whole range of possibilities. And the sort of the long, sleek caravans that you tie behind your, your car. Yeah. And so you're doing the same thing with these as you've done with the houseboats and the traditional homes, that if you get one, you can have great fun playing with the different styles. Yes, in fact, and what, um, well, here's here comes a surprise. Um, for those of you who have been over there to see them, um, I don't think I've actually heard any feedback on how many um, we are going to release, but there are eight Wow. And after this show, um, you could go revisit the region and you may find some more. Some that were not out when we originally brought out the region. <laughs> Are you guys going to talk about the names today, the name change? I'm going to be talking about that with Oz tom uh, tomorrow, I think, because Oz is working on that. But Patch, if you have anything to say about the name change. About name changes? Uh, no, I'm going to leave that for us. <laughs> okay, so you'll thank need you for answering my question. Sorry. You'll need to come back tomorrow and ask us. So, yes, the traditional, I mean, you've had to build more and more houseboat areas, I understand. Yes. Yes. And so um, this was another thing that I think people are really clamoring to know about uh, is what does our release stuff look like uh, as far as schedule and timing? Um, 
as many of you are probably aware, and if you've been paying attention, you've been seeing uh, us actually work in front of you uh, in real time uh, on a set of regions um, over there uh, near what is now the Bellis Area Fairgrounds. And uh, if you look at it on the map and if you're watching down that, down that corridor of regions, um, we've literally been building the regions in front of you. And we did this for a couple of different reasons. Um, you know, we were getting a lot of feedback and you know, folks asking us, you know, how long, when is the next release coming uh, and stuff. So we basically decided to just reveal it and show you everything that we do in front of you in the open and public. Um, you know, I feel like that this then, you know, is just us being transparent and showing you what all goes into these regions as far as the work involved and how long it takes to put these things together to make them come out the way they do and what I think has made them successful to date. Um, you know, we are really trying our best to not put out something cookie cutter. Uh, yes. And we don't, we don't want to, you know, take regions and just make duplicates of them and copy them out. And what you're seeing unfold in front of you is that process. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what I'm here to tell you today is going forward, our release process on those particular regions is going to come with a lot more frequency. Um, I will post an update about what we're talking about here today to my forum post that a lot of people know about and have been watching for status updates. Um, but starting today and after this show, we are going to go on a one region per every other day or so release cadence of the new traditional and houseboat regions going forward. Um, there may be some gaps in that. Um, we've got a holiday week coming up next week. You know, we'll probably have a gap there. But basically, we're going to aim for a region every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we can. Uh, we've got a bit of a, a backlog of regions ready to be released now, um, and we are in this kind of process of where we're building regions kind of in this uh, interesting assembly line fashion so mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we literally have a team of folks who go through and prep a region and divide it all up and then put all the houses down and then do all of the, the trees and decorating. Um, and do, do all the little finite little decoration details, and then we QA it, and then it's prepped for release. So that whole process, kind of end-to-end, -end, is what has to happen for each song. And, of course, there's various regions in that release pipeline, and as we're moving forward, we feel like you know we kind of continue to do this. So I won't update on a regular basis, like, hey, we're going to release a day. Just mm -hmm. Know that they're coming with regularity um, going That's forward. Fantastic. That's and are you going to start folding in the camper and trailer regions as well? So the campers and trailers regions are going to come in a large release initially. Right. Um, and uh, we we feel like you know kind of rolling out that entire area because it is a bit of kind of like a scenery change and a theme change and stuff like that. Thematically, it doesn't you know quite line up. It's it's all designed to kind of blend together, you know. So you'll transition from one area of the continent to another. Mm -hmm. um, but as we as we kind of go through that process, you know, you'll see a whole bunch of regions probably get spun up for those of you who keep you know an eye on these things. Um, mm -hmm and like to guess at what we're doing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you'll probably see the building versions of those regions come soon, and then we'll start building those out, and then at some point, you know, we'll have like a really large base in the near future for those as well. Um, and then those will enter that same process of, you know, kind of this more frequent release cadence. And then we'll be off to our next theme after that, which I'm not going to really talk too much about. Um, no. No. I mean, you can tell me. Yeah, well. no, no one here is going to notice. <laughs> um, I do actually have something else, though, for um, the camper trailer regions, and I know that people have kind of been interested in knowing what kind of parcel sizing we're going to be offering. So they're all actually designed, and everything that we have is designed to go for the most part, uh, either 512 or yeah. parcel. Um, we are going to start out the campers and trailers with 512 square meter parcels. But I did and notice a rather large-looking house at the edge of that region. Oh, the log cabin? Yeah. 
Yeah, so the log cabin was, uh, the, I believe it was the winter gift. So oh. that's actually just something that we already had in our, you know, content, mm. you know, uh, stuff that we actually said, you know what, hey, this thing looks great. So we stuck it in there <laughs> at kind of the entrance of the region. Um, but we've actually had a lot of people ask us for it. So we're thinking about maybe how we can do something with that. I don't know what we'll that do with it yet, but we'll see. Um, the the campers and trailers region, and this actually kind of segues me to another topic. It will come with the, its kind of own like really big kind of large scale community area. One of the mm -hmm. things that we've been working on putting in, um, which I already mentioned, the Bellis area fairgrounds are these kind of community co-op spaces where we'll have, you know, kind of like a group set up uh, to allow people to get into the group and sign up uh, to use space events and stuff. Um, in fact, we've got our first two events coming on July 4th and July 6th with this Belisaria community group formed. Um, and they will be using the fairgrounds to run kind of 4th of July and holiday weekend festivities. Stuff. So that's right. coming up. Really A lot of oh, people cool. yeah, see some more information circulating about that as well. Um, we put in a, a, a new water ferry service. Um, it's not finished yet, uh, but uh, it's almost done. And it's it's our test boat is running. Uh, so there's going to there. be a, a water ferry service for people who are uh, that's going to ferry people from Belisaria to the mainland. Yeah, so the the water ferry will run between the Belisaria fairgrounds and the shoreline of kind of the main coast of the continent to the mm. east of it. That's really cool. Yeah, and there's, there's a fairground there now too. Yep, yep, it's it's there and ready to go. Currently, uh, there's a giant rainbow statue of Magellan sitting there. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you go by and take a look, that's what you will see. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, we'll have more information to come uh, about how you can like reserve and use the space soon. That's very cool. So how? Oh. Sorry, you'll have the, the new one up and running. My next question is going to sound like, you know, you want more, but I just wondered how you, whether you're developing any games that will happen in the new continents. We don't have any game work going on right now. All of our focus uh, the first half of this year really has generally been with um, Linden Homes and uh, getting ready for this SL16B. I can see that that's kept people busy. Uh, yeah, very much so. <laughs> As you don't have an infinite supply of moles. Un unfortunately, so, I don't. No. So, what about welcome areas? Because this has been a big issue um, of getting onboarding people. And I know this is an issue that's very close to your heart, making efficient welcome areas. How's that going? It's going pretty well. Um, so while I say we don't do anything in the background besides these two projects, um, we do actually have some stuff that we're working on with the new user welcome region. Uh, we've been doing some testing with marketing to onboard new users to specific join those and the, the actual regions themselves are built to kind of thematically match them. So that's really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So that's been going on in the background, and it's been working really well. We've been getting some pretty interesting insights and data. Uh, another thing that we kind of spun up and we're testing uh, is using a, uh, a group of mentors uh, mm -hmm. who uh, have been camping out on one of the uh, learning islands. Uh, they've got access to it, and... Uh, we're seeing if having mentors stationed on a learning island uh, impacting both the user experience, retention, mm. etc. That's interesting because you keep fairly tight stats on how successful all of these things are. Yes, yes. So... I understand there's been an expansion of the Atlanta office for yeah, and 
In fact, there has. The, uh, we, we do have an office locally in Atlanta, uh, for those of mm-hmm. you who didn't know. Um, that's where I'm, I'm at. And uh, we're actually uh, investing um, in you know, our staff in, in Georgia. And it's increasing in size, and so is the office. The uh, uh, size of the office, in fact, uh, we're getting ready to look at moving uh, building and literally doubling our space. Wow. This is very cool. And the Atlanta office concentrates primarily on Second Life, do they? Or are they also involved in Sansa? It is primarily Second Life, uh, being that, you know, I head up all of support. Sansar support also resides there as right. well. Um, it's a smaller, you know, small team, but uh, it's, it is mostly Second Life. Right. And how, how is Sansar going? You know, honestly, I don't, I don't have a lot of visibility or involvement with Sansar. Uh, mm-hmm. We we very much um, are are kind of functioning as t- you know two separate products. Um, other than the fact that you know Sansar support does in fact report up to me, it does come through uh, another uh, manager of mine, Derek, who- mm-hmm. and um, you know he pretty much oversees Sansar support's daily operations. So um, you know while I remain primarily committed to and focused on second life you know anything that needs my really high level oversight and stuff i take care of well but you know all in all um i'm really focused on second life and not surprisingly you've got so much to do here <laughs> yes yeah it, it is it is uh it's quite quite a bit of work and uh you know derek derek takes care of sansar for me and uh you know, the team itself is doing really well, uh, and uh, I think Sansar's got a really bright, promising future. Um, so I uh, I hope they do well. But Second Life also has a bright and promising future. They do. They do. Um, our roadmap for Second Life is uh, still looks out, you know, we, we, we look out a decade ahead of mm-hmm. ourselves. Um, so, you know, what I'm thinking about, even when I was thinking about Linden Homes a year and a half ago, I think when we initially started thinking about it, I was thinking about, you know, how to do these homes and how to structure the the, the, the layout and the neighborhoods and everything like that. The entire team mm-hmm. was involved with this, you know, back then. And, and how, how, how are we setting this up for 2020 and beyond? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that was very much the approach we took. I think one of the things I love about the new Linden Homes, well, a couple of things I love. First of all is that you gave everyone so much more space. Uh, when you look at the old Linden Homes, it was very much little boxes on the hillside. Yeah, that was, a, that was you know, very much part of the, the design. Um, I remember mm-hmm. some very early feedback um, from, the sh- from the Home and Garden Show. Um, people were questioning why did the houses seem so tiny compared to the actual physical space that they sit on on the parcel? Mm. And I said, well, we're trying to walk a balance between, you know, what we expect to see come from the content creator communities mm-hmm. involved with Bellis area, content for the houses and stuff with add-ons to, you know, also being able to adequately decorate the interior of the house. So, we decided intentionally to go with a slightly smaller footprint home so that you had all you know a generous amount of yard space to be able to do interesting things like add carports, garages, add-ons. I, mm-hmm. I, I've seen like massive like wraparound porch, uh, kind of like living room den add-ons and stuff like that that you can kind of just bolt onto the side of the house and mm-hmm. you know it literally doubles its footprint in size and takes up most of the yard. So uh, you know we, I think. Uh, you know, we set out to accomplish, you know, this balance. Um, and I think we hit it, uh, mm-hmm. in the fact that, you know, it's generated a lot of people doing both inside and outside decorating work and stuff, um, you know, to, to make everyone's, you know, properties and houses and stuff like that unique in their own. Mm. I love the way that, um, second life builders have jumped on the possibilities here. I've, 
um, my alt has got a houseboat and I got one of the kits for that, which sort of divides it into rooms and adds a path to the roof and all sorts of amazing things. Um, and I, I've been inspired by Inara Pei, who I think is here, who's been posting some wonderful blog posts about how she's decorating her, her husband and keeps changing it and doing other things with it. Yeah, I know that there's a there's a set of folks in the community who literally are cycling through every model of every house. They are completely decorating and kind of gussying up the house from top to bottom, yard and all. They take a whole bunch of pictures and then they like burn it to the ground and start over with the next model. And yeah. it's it's really kind of awesome, Zoya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've uh, next door to my houseboat. Um, someone has done something really amazing. They've got a, the houseboat is decorated, but they save the bulk of the prints for underwater. And there is the most amazing, beautiful mermaid garden under the houseboat. Yeah, I've seen a I've seen a whole bunch of setups like that as well. Um, some really unique and interesting uses of like that open water space off the docks, mm -hmm. uh, where people add more docks, or they just kind of build extensions and out like hot tubs and uh, you know create kind of like this whole separate like portico type of a setup and stuff. I've seen some super cool this mm. is out of them. Which is such a huge, that's another huge thing over the old Linton homes where you were basically stuck designing in, inside or possibly putting a bit of a roof garden on if you had a flat roof. Yep, I've, I've seen a handful of roof gardens. Um, I've seen, interestingly, like barnyard pens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I've seen a whole host of different uses and stuff for them. Uh, uh, another thing that I think has has been great is uh, folks in the community have have actually just given their home into being used by the community. Um, you know, there's a a handful of like little pubs and and coffee shops and stuff like that um, that kind of sit out there uh, scattered amongst the regions. One of them, of course, is uh, probably if. Uh, lives. Mm -hmm. That's where that is... that's where folks tend to kind of gather and sit on the wall and watch the moles build down on that new area of the continent uh, from time to time. As we've been talking, people have come in with comments like Casey Moran has just has. It's created a whole new community feeling that Second Life had lost. Yes, yes, it's and it's great. I love it. Um, and I and I'm. Uh, really ecstatic that uh, people are enjoying it to the levels that they are uh, and and even myself participating in it because um, I've been getting in and really enjoying uh, you know the various social aspects and stuff and uh, you know, being able to kind of establish our own quirkiness between there's a, there's a, Okay, that's, uh, I've got the name of that person if anyone needs it. Yep, fast AR in. Yeah, well, with Kristen here, you're not, you're not going to survive the day long. No. All right. Okay. Where were we? Right, so we were talking about the community <laughs> spirit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Bella, Bella well, was so, so there's there's this kind of joke and stuff like that in the background where like one of the groups like they say my name like three times I pop up like Beetlejuice and it just kind of never fails they'll start talking about something and mention my name and then I catch it because 
you know, I'll, I'll happen to like look at my screen at the right moment and say, oh, well, they just asked me a question and I answer them. <laughs> and I might not have been paying attention the 15 minutes prior. <laughs> yeah. Someone said earlier that they're amazed by the amount of blue dots seeing they're seeing here but i think it's true that there's so much more of second life resident of lindens being around these days and mixing with the community yeah and and you know uh, by and large a large part of that is is and i have to give ebay credit here um because Abe has really kind of empowered us and enabled us to be able to come in and be part of the community, you know, with you all. Um, I, I, I still tend to cling on to the old saying of walk in our residents' shoes. Um, and I think that this is us doing all of that to the very best of our abilities. And I, I think that's great. I mean, it's also been seen in actually working on projects, which Oz has done an awful lot of involving people in the introduction of things like Bento and Animesh. Yes, indeed. And you're kind of doing it from another angle as well, which was terrific, I, the social aspect, really. Okay, so uh, I'm looking now for questions. If people want to be asking, uh, Lynn Darkwatch well, has just said we like seeing you folks around, especially at events like Fantasy Fair. My goodness, you raised some money this year, didn't you? Oh, yes, and it was a blast. Um, in fact, I think we had an all-time high coming out of this year's uh, Jail and Bail. Um, yeah. it, was, it was great. Um, the, uh, you know, and, and I, and I really enjoy, you know, participating at that level as well, because it's, it's for really, really good, meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm tentatively so, asking for a few questions. <laughs> so I, I, I actually do have one other thing that I, I want to talk about regarding okay. the new campers and trailers regions and stuff. Right, go for it. So not only are we going to, you know, create these awesome regions with these campers and these trailers uh, and stuff, um, and we will potentially be turning the dials on introducing commercial spaces in campers and trailers. Oh. But let me just say choo-choo. Chugga what? chugga choo-choo. Therefore, people are have a... If there would be trains. And and that will continue into the theme after, which will be extremely fitting for that to continue into. Wait, so are the stores going to move? No monorails. There are going to be trains. Not monorails? No monorails. Wait, wait, wait. No, true, true, true rail. You guys are actually going to go with my suggestion that I made? Well, I don't know. I thought of this a year ago. Was your suggestion that old? No. <laughs> <laughs> it depends, Kerry. Kerry asks, what's wrong with monorails? I can remember my monorail having a fight with another monorail at the Home and Garden Expo. Was it purple? Oh, that's probably a really bad Disney joke. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, but we managed to get two minutes on film, and it looked really cool on the film. So, what about the SLRR? So, is this going to be related to SLRR? You'll have to wait and see. Okay. I, would, I would imagine if it goes choo-choo, it's got to have something to do with the SLRR. <laughs> You said also commercial space? Oh I, I, I might have mentioned something about commercial space. So we're looking at that after the campus and trailers or along with commercial or trailers? Um, it, it, it will potentially maybe be along with it. 
So it would give people the opportunity to use their Linden homes for commercial purposes? Potentially. Okay. And I'm doing my hardcore interview here. <laughs> I hope you noticed. <laughs> there, there, there will also... Um, uh, okay, I'll spill another one. Um, there will there will also be, and this is unrelated to that directly, but sort of okay. similarly connected. Um, you know, one of the things that a lot of the folks in the community kind of asked for in, you know, kind of the whole notion of, you know, putting out like these event spaces and stuff like that is, you know, could we maybe have like these, you know, special little like, um, remember Busy Benz? Anybody remember Busy Benz? No. But no. So it's sort of like um, a communal, um, like merchant stall space. Uh, so uh, the idea is, yes, Wendy knows, um, and and Misty. Uh, so you know, kind of this whole notion of having this communal, like uh, merchant stall space where folks who make, and I would restrict this to people who are making, you know, add-ons and furnishings and things like that. That would be specific to. Um, the New Linden Homes um, could mm -hmm. potentially get one of these vendor spaces on like some sort of a rotational basis um, and, you know, set up like their their little shop space uh, or something like that in one of these areas. And we may have these kind of spread around sort of like uh, the same with the community areas. Would these be in addition to the, their own Linden Home or would they... N Go no, this it. would be something completely separate. So more like, you know, a lottery system where folks would sign up and uh, get a little like booth stall thing, whatever this looks like when we actually go to put it together um, and, you know, just utilize the, the land impact in their little space, right, to set up a little shop type of a thing. Hmm. If I could throw something else out there, I'd I'd love to see sort of, little art galleries in the parks ideas, you know, where people could have temporary displays, put their, their work out as a little display and it would be up there for a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so yeah. not only could you do something like that, but, you know, like the fairgrounds and, and these spaces that are coming like that, um, you know, would be perfect for that. You know, if there is no other events on the books and, you know, if somebody wants to kind of come together and put up, uh, you know, uh, like an art walk or something like that and utilize the fairgrounds for that for like two weeks or something, you know, as long as the calendar is clear, um, there's no reason why that can't happen. And that's perfect for those types of spaces. That would be cool. Yes, like a community fair. That's, yeah. That's yeah, that's... Really that's why we gave the fairgrounds the name the fairgrounds because um in the american sense of a fairgrounds i don't mean an amusement park right i mean a fairgrounds where it's basically a, a blank slate of earth um mm -hmm. that you can go in and set up what you want to on it that's cool <laughs> callie suggested a kitty cat's petting park <laughs> that would be fun now, someone has said it would be really great if second life kids could be part of things why can't they be? Hmm. And they could have, you know, they could get together and be on the fairgrounds, put up a kid's playground, an adventure playground. Sure. There's, I, I know of a, like in my own region, um, I know of two, um, you know, kid community uh, homeowners uh, in, in my region alone. Um, so they're out there. Mm -hmm. uh and they they have the homes and stuff uh and so yeah i mean if there was some specific kids party yeah event or something like that that they wanted to put together mm -hmm. there's no reason why they can't that would be brilliant Let's Someone not confuse is... real life kids with second life kids because I'm seeing some comments go by. This has nothing to do with your real life age. We're talking about second life child avatars, right? Yeah. RP People kids. Have... Yeah. And um, like... that's fine. Yeah. Because... because if you can be a dragon or an elf or, I don't know, a lion or a horse. 
Why can't you be a kid? And most kids have, uh, uh, you know, yeah, no fur is anything. Bunnies, even, yes. Why would you want to be a kid, though? Well, if you go off with a bunch of your friends and build a camp in the woods and eat s'mores, it's a very different experience if you're 10 years old or if you're 30 years old. There's something great in having kid-type adventures. But it's different if you do it as an adult. Some people didn't have a good childhood, so they want to have a problem. You guys like bowling? Is bowling a... Do we, is bowling coming to SL? You can bowl, yeah. If you go to some of the amusement parks, you'll find bowling alleys. Just search. Bowling is... Tenpin bowling is here in Second Life. Right now? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, someone here has said, Donna Castor has said that she has a bowling place. Hook up with her and you can play on her. Can I be an Apache attack helicopter? There are an awful lot of things that you don't realize. Loads of sports and amusement parks. You can play golf too or go surfing. I mean, there's amazing stuff. Just go around SL. 16B, the resident places, and you'll find all sorts of amazing sports going on. Okay, let's get back to Patch. We've got Patch here, guys. Any questions for him? I got one. Go on. When are you going to redo the SLRR? Sorry? I already gave you that hint. Yes. You've had a hand. More importantly, Patch, do you like bowling? I was asking you, actually. I hate bowling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Yeah, but... um, I got a question, if I may. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a DJ. I'm DJing. Uh, you know, I'm performing. This is my first time performing for Second Life Birthday this year, but, you know, you hear a lot of rumors within SL about, you know, if your music isn't cleaned up or, you know, it has things that, you know, at the end of the titles like, um, uh, you know, lyric video or anything at the end that you are subject to, like, you know, having your venue closed down or you're subject to fines within real life because of it. And so I'm just wondering if that is just a rumor or if it's something true or... You know what I'm talking about? No, because honestly, I haven't heard this. Oh, okay. So there's one of those things, right? Yeah. I wish yeah, I could get that. around for a while now. That, like, yeah, for some years, places, actually. Some places will fire you if you have that stuff in there, because like, oh my god, Linda's going to come and shut us down. Um, most places have a well, all places in Second Life have a rating. There are general, like this, there's moderate, and there's adult. And there's certain music that you really shouldn't be playing on general. Or yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not just, I'm not talking about, you know, how to, you know, you know, abide by sim ratings. I'm just talking about if there's any copyright or something like that that Lindens enforce that would get your venue shut down or something because of it. You know, you're not having the titles cleaned up on your songs. I don't know. That might be speaking more to intellectual property rights than anything else. People own those songs. And if you're using them here to make money, you need to be wary that in violation of somebody's copyright, if I was a company that had you here, I'd shut you down too. Yeah, but whoever that me, was, you have a nice voice. I, I, uh, I, I pay for my song. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah, I, hear you. I, 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 pay, I, I pay for Virtual DJ itself. So even to search within this library, like I have, you know, I pay for those rights. It's and it's a licensing agreement. You know. So a lot of people just use Sam's and their, you know, cracked versions that, you know, kind of filter in and out of SL a lot. But, yeah, 
that's that was just my question. You know, it's just one of those things that you kind of hear is in SL club scenes a lot. As a, and I would just wanted to get some validation just personally to see if it was a rumor or not. Or if it, I think I don't know if Patch, you can answer that. I can't. Because I don't know enough about the DJing profession to be able to speak to it in an educated manner. I mean, I can probably say something blanketed like, if if you are a DJ, and if you are doing DJ work in Second Life, you should probably know what you are doing within the bounds of the law and how to do it appropriately. We don't yeah. we don't control that, right? We can't tell you how to do that. You should be doing that for yourself. So it's upon you to decide yeah. whether or not you're doing. Yeah, and so my my question was just solely as if if Linden Labs was enforcing some some sort of you know you know rule or coming down on people for it. I mean, it's been a rumor. That's we don't been we don't enforce it because we, we don't we don't stream the music, right? The music doesn't pass through Second Life servers, so we have nothing to do with it. It just gets handed off through your as a media link. Yeah, you know. But I don't know if somebody complimented my voice. I saw something like that, or if it was the person that spoke. Oh, up. that was the other Did guy. I problem. forgot. I don't, I don't know what his name <laughs> was. Yeah. But the other Not guy. Yeah. Yeah. How crushing. Oh, what about Splutter? Is there Splutter still loud? <laughs> okay. okay, let's uh, let's get off this subject. Uh, uh, um, uh, I just make one suggestion that if you want to check out about licensing and things might be a question to ask on the forums and people who know about this stuff will probably answer you um, uh, i mean as okay. long as i you know i i you know as long as there's not like some sort of linden yeah patches, of, i patches, really don't care you know, you know you get no. a, like, just like in chat you get a bunch of people yeah. saying that, okay uh, i think we've an, covered that thank you uh, i, I want patch, to move uh, on to other questions patch, i have a question about uh, the second life blog. hang on hang on we've got some questions in oh. chat first which i'd like to pick up on and then we'll Are you we'll take patch, another uh, voice one Okay, um, I'm going to take one from Amelia Cam, who says uh, she's been coming here from for over ten years, and in the balance, she's not had any bad experiences or ones she can't handle, and she spent some real money uh, to make herself look good, which she is, but otherwise fairly good time. How can you entice normal people back? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by and brooms. But how can you get normal people to come back? Yeah, I'm not sure what she means by normal. May I ask my question now? If it's okay. Well, let Patch have a chance to respond to that about how we can reach out to more people. Let's just yes, that's a good one. Face it like that. I, how can we yeah, do that? Well, I don't, yeah, I don't really, I don't know. The, I don't, I guess I don't understand the genesis the, or the context of the question. Um, you know, we, we send out, you know, marketing stuff, right? Uh, and we do send out, you know, emails and things of that nature. If folks have been gone from Second Life for a while, uh, the unfortunate side effect of the way the digital world works is people change email addresses almost too frequently, uh, or they lose track, or they lose access to a particular email account. And, you know, unfortunately, I actually see a pretty high incidence rate behind us losing contact with people because of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I... Uh, I, I, I hope that, you know, folks who, you know, are out there and are interested in coming to see Second Life and um, even how uh, it looks today versus 10 years ago, um, you know, are in for a real treat because a lot of things have changed and it's very different. Um, I think all for the better. And, uh, you know, word of mouth, I think, is probably one of our most powerful advertising vectors, in my opinion. Um, and so telling your friends and I kind of have a suggestion patch for and stuff. Who are new, like if you I could not interrupt me, point. I would finish what I'm saying in an wow. election. Wow. Done. Finish patch. So. Oh, you were done. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Go on, patch.
Patch, are you okay? You okay, little guy? I think Patch may have actually lost voice at this point. Did he crash? I think it's possible. Mm, well, I guess we'll have to wait for him to re-log. <laughs> He's trying to get his voice back. Mm -hmm. Patch, buddy, are you okay? Do you want a soda? No, his voice went out. He's been having hiccups. All right. I think it's ah! back now. Maybe. Back. It's really, like... The bars, they're not, like, staying lit, so I don't know if it's really coming through. Okay. I can hear you. You're good. Okay, so as I was saying, um, you know, we lose touch with people, and we, we have a really high incidence rate of, of losing touch with people because of changes and, you know, email addresses and people losing track of their accounts and things like that. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, we don't have any control over that. And one of our most powerful vectors, I think, for advertising is word of mouth and socializing Second Life with your friends, families, communities, you know, other places that you're involved with folks, uh, stuff in your social circles, and telling them what it's all about. If you love it as much as you do here, um, you know, hopefully people with like interests that you have will also see um, Second Life powerful and as valuable as it is. That all come through. I can't tell because it's yeah. it's like yeah. barely working. We faded at the end, but the rest was good. Uh, Jahan has another question. Go for it, Jahan. Hi. Um, I want to know if what. We're going to get uh, to pick our names or last names or all of our names. I really wish we could do that. Okay, Jahan, that's really a question for Oz Linden, and I'll be talking to him tomorrow. He's going to be talking about Second Life names. Yeah, I can tell you that it's it's still very much on our roadmap and on our radar. It's being worked on, um, but I'm going to let Oz talk about it tomorrow. I don't want to spoil anything that he may want to share. Uh, Patch, yeah. I've, uh, going back to the question that you just answered previously uh, regarding marketing, I've noticed that a lot of blog posts have come up uh, mentioning Sansar. Is there going to be an active push to push uh, Second Life users into Sansar? There's been active posts on Second Life sites about Sansar? So the blog post mentioned Sansar. There have been a couple of blog posts uh, on uh, mentioning Sansar on the blog. Uh, like oh, we don't. No, we, we aren't we aren't at all interested in pushing residents from Second Life to Sansar. It's two completely different products. Okay, very good. Thank you. Hey, Patch. I have. I don't really have a question. I just have more of a quick statement. Do you mind if I just say that here? Sure. Okay. I just wanted to thank the Linden's Moles volunteers community and everyone at Linden Labs for everything they do to make Second Life what it is today and to keep it alive and well. Without Second Life, I wouldn't be really comfortable expressing myself or being comfortable with my own identity. And lastly, I would have not met Eli, who is sitting right next to me, my loving partner without Second Life. Thank you very much for, for providing us with such a wonderful platform. That is great. Yay. Yes, it is. Um, and and I don't I don't know if you caught. Um, I don't know if voice is coming through again. There it goes. Yes, um, it is. I don't I don't know if you caught my opening speech, but in fact, I can share with you. Um, very much the same for me. Uh, you know, Second Life has changed my life, both personally and professionally, um, on various levels. Um, 
I, I would have never thought that there would have been a day that I would have dreamed about being able to have sat here in front of many, many people, um, let alone an audience of five as small as that. Um, I was extremely shy, very introverted. My upbringing was, um, you know, kind of quiet in that regard. And, um, you know, my personal challenges and stuff, uh, I was able to meet those, rise and overcome them because of Second Life. And also because of Second Life, um, I've met my husband, Second Life, um, who is here amongst us today. Um, and so much like, you know, I can share the same sentiment with you. Second Life has meant uh, a lot of those various types of things to me as well, uh, personally. Oh my god, I love you even more now, Patch. <laughs> Yay, Patch is one of us. <laughs> okay, so there is a question that's come up several times. Will Belisaria link to the Blake Sea eventually? That's a, that's I don't know yet. Um I, I wanna say yes. Um I'm, I'm hoping we will get up and around that area. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I, I'm going to put that on the wheel CTM um, right. part of the, the tsunometer. Uh, I, I, I do think we will eventually get there. It's, it's, the, the continent's going to continue to grow. It's going to be really large. And I, I would love to see it you know, just get up to that area uh, at some point in time and kind of bridge the continents and stuff uh, with waterways. You know, a lot of folks know that, you know, we have kind of like this dual region channel of water regions that run south from the continent. And you know, we're going to fill all of that in eventually too, so that we won't just have these two lazy uh, or this kind of lazy two, two region wide strip of water running south. You're going to actually have navigable water that's attached to, you know, continent and masses with homes and stuff like that. At so, you know, we have a lot of really big plans around the long term as it kind of grows and moves out. Now, Sophia? Hello? Hello. Yes, go now. Okay. Do you want me to go now? Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Um, Patch, this is Callie Klein, and I wanted to just wish you a happy birthday, too, on behalf of all the Kitty Cats community because they just, like... Okay, we'll try to get through this without crying, but in doing this, even before when I just did the other stuff, so many people's lives have been changed from going through cancer with people to losing their pets that we get to replicate for them to, oh gosh, we've had people that didn't commit suicide because they had a cat that told them they loved them. To, I could probably go on for a long time of how amazing that Second Life has been. <laughs> like, just, and I'm, I know that it happens in all the different communities. So, thank you guys for everything you do. And I know you get bitched out a lot, but we really, you've made a difference, a real, real difference in people's lives. And a lot of our customers are disabled or even our staff. Um, one works from uh, a a hospital and um it's you have no idea of the life that they get to have when they can't even get out of a wheelchair or something so thank you so much and it just means a lot and callie thank you so yes, much yes thank you so much for that callie I feel, I know there are lots of questions and things, but I feel that that's probably a wonderful note to end on. I agree. I've got some linen homes to go put out on the grid, too. <laughs> and a choo-choo. And I think you've got some selfies to have taken. And <laughs> yeah. Also some linden bears. I did see people saying, could they have a patch bear? Yes. Uh, and just so folks know, <laughs> as, as long as nothing happens, because Linden's crashed too, um, I've got your <laughs> IMs all queued up in the background, and I'll start going through them as soon as we can kind of free up. Uh, but if you don't get a bear from me, I didn't ignore you. Just IM me again a little later on uh, in case I lose your message. Um, I promise I'll give you one. I got ejected earlier, but can I still get my selfie? Yes. 
Thanks. <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, so thank you, audience, uh, for your questions. And above all, thank you, Patch. This has been brilliant. And I guess we're having a tiny river dance. Oh, that was one question that I missed and I really ought to ask. Go Patch, ahead. will like there ever be noise. tiny homes? Cardboard boxes? No. <laughs> Look at them. Will you guys ever fix the virtual prostitution? What's there to fix? Want more of it. <laughs> okay, tomorrow I'm going to be talking to Oz and April Linden. Same time, same place. And uh, we'll certainly be talking about Second Life names. Wednesday I'm talking to Ebe. And on Thursday, I'm talking to Ziola and Strawberry, newest London. Yes, Thanks and don't forget Friday. Friday. And Friday. Meet the moles. Meet the moles. And Patch again. Yes, so all of your unanswered questions, bring them Friday. <laughs> I think for those, second life viewers would be an Oz thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who want to go see them, um, the the new campers and trailers that weren't there before are out. Which region are they on? Spellbound. Spellbound. Yep. Can't wait to live in a trailer like real life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I ask one more question? <gasps> Not about the Second Life Railroad. You said uh, commercials for Bellasero. Does that mean GTFO? How do you mean? You said there's going to be commercial property soon for Bellasero? Yeah. Is you going to allow GTFO there then? I still don't understand what you mean by GTFO. Get the freight out. It's like a... Get the foe. Get the freight out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the train they system. Know what they're owning. Um, I don't know. So I know Sin's trying to work on it to <sighs> allow it. Um, age. A lot still up in the air. Oh, it's early day, early days still. Mm -hmm. Bruh. <laughs> Don't you bruh me, bruh you. You think my forehead vein is popping? Listen here, I forehead ladies. Hey, I'm hey. mad. I'm mad. Uh, uh, Why are you mad? 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 Thank you, Patch. <laughs> <laughs>